one two one two you know how we do with your boy bq this is the b-side podcast and just like i do with every single b-side podcast i'll let you know how rare these are but thank you to the powers that be aka covid i got some time to sit down and talk impact wrestling with you guys today and i've got five predictions for 2022 these are not necessarily super hot takes they're just some things i've got on my mind things that i think are gonna happen maybe they don't maybe they do I don't know, but what I do know is that we're off to a great start in 2022. We had a tremendous pay-per-view. We had an excellent episode of Impact after the pay-per-view. We're off to a good start. Since, And this is what I've said a few times. Since November, it's been getting progressively better. We can forget that throwback throwdown happened, but besides that, it's getting progressively better. And I think they're valuing some of the things that I have valued for a really long time. And there's people who disagree with me on a very regular basis thinking that some of the ideas I have for the company for improvements are very nitpicky, are not necessary. They think I'm just talking out of my ass. But some of these things people over there are now now finding to be necessary and now look who's enjoying the product, all of us. So I can't be that wrong, right? You know, now If you're one of the people who disagreed with me all of that stuff and you're seeing the changes being made and enjoying the product you know maybe I had some good ideas maybe I knew what I was talking about so we're off to a great start I'm really pleased this is this is just the happiest I've been watching the product in a really long time I've made the comment a couple times now that the pandemic era of impact wrestling had me depressed Uh, I wanted to shut this this channel down Uh, but I know I have a responsibility to Uh, to talk impact with people so I really powered through it but I I was not enjoying it and um, little by little it's getting better and I'm really happy right now I'm really enjoying what they're doing so here's five predictions I have for 2022 number five this one is a, a, a little bit on the negative side and then after that a little more positive digital media championship I think the digital media championship is going to be phased out by the end of 2022. The title's a prop. It means nothing. The wrestlers don't care about it. The fans don't care about it. I'm not sure the company cares about it. They had an idea at first that I thought was like, okay, this could work. I, I don't. I don't think many of us like the title. I mean the. Uh, well, I mean the title, the name of the belt. The actual belt itself. Some people liked it, some people didn't. They say it looked like the AEW title, but I think when they actually... Had, I think the picture makes it look more than more like it than when Jordan Grace is actually holding it. They had some ideas at first. You know, it's we're, we're going to have digital exclusive matches. Um, the title is going to be defended in the, digital, in the digital space. So we thought we were going to see title defenses on YouTube and Impact Plus and... Um, maybe the pre-show of a pay-per-view. That's what we were expecting. And at first they, they, I I think they kind of started off, it's a good idea. I think the execution and everything is ass, but I think the idea is good. And I think it is kind of an innovative idea, to be honest. It's like a TV title, but for digital media, but you have to defend it on digital media and that hasn't been happening. And when we had the tournament, they let us know within the first match that this title wasn't serious. And, uh, you know, you got people wrestling for it who weren't even contracted to the company. That's how, you know, serious it was. So this isn't a mid-card title. It's a lower-card title. Jordan Grace currently holds it, but she's also in the knockouts title picture. You know, she competed in Ultimate X, had a good chance of winning it. But I think we've seen concepts in the past that Impact has had that because the focus wasn't there initially the way it needed to be they've disappeared very quickly you know I'm, I'm, we've we've had podcasts uh, we've had you know Aftershock I don't think Aftershock is still a thing correct me if I'm wrong we've had you know we've had Josh Matthews try to kick off a few different podcasts and after shows and things like that um, 
and they're cool for a few months and then they completely disappear they completely fall off because the focus isn't there the way it needs to. there's not a clear mission statement this is what we want to do with this and then it just it, then it's gone because no one cares and I see this title going that direction I, I would say you can't save it at this point but I would say you've got another like 45 days to, to, to save this title and if we get through the end of February and it's the way it is now it's, it's gonna be dead it's gonna be totally dead and at first they had actual they had I don't want to say they were good matches they weren't but they had quality matches for the digital media exclusive matches in front of the audience impact cameras they were very quick matches and if I had to take a guess I think that you know the management team and all these individuals who are involved sat down and said okay this is an average they looked at their YouTube average watch time and said okay uh, people will watch full matches but they seem to the average watch time is like six seven minutes that's when people tend to punch out or maybe they fast forward and only watch the final six seven minutes of it so I think they were like okay we're gonna keep these matches brief we're gonna respect that watch time because I think a lot of people don't necessarily want to watch full matches on their phone that's just where you know usually you have your phone in your hand and you're just like, oh, who can I text what website can I go to let me check Facebook and Instagram etc I don't think people really enjoy just sitting there watching full matches and stuff on their phones unless they have to or unless they're really bored like they're at work or something and they just prop it up so I think they kept the matches short but then we got like the Brian Myers and John Schuyler match which I like both those guys but it was super long it was in front of 20 people in a high school gym which I've been to plenty of shows in high school gyms and and, and VFWs and bingo halls like I don't I don't care about that necessarily but it's just a big drop off to where now it comes off like hey we just need to give them something we gotta we're not actually filming content for this anymore so let's let's squeeze some twitch style independent matches on here which tend to be long you know independent matches longer than what we see on TV and it's a weird place because it's like here's this match that we don't care about no one cares about it's some of our lower card guys and it's a long match so I don't think it works Jordan Grace isn't defending the title on the pre-show. You know, she didn't defend on the pre-show with Hard to Kill. I think she did at Turning Point, though. That was the Chelsea Green match, right? But she's not defending it on YouTube. There's nothing like that going on. It's not. She's not defending it on Facebook. Nothing, you know? I, I remember years ago, the NWA was title, uh, when Tim Storm had it, was defended on Facebook. Uh, you know, before the show kicked off. And it, it did really, really good numbers because it was, it was exclusive to a tune into Facebook for this title match. Like, we're not getting those kind of things. So the digital media concept is good. It's just not good execution. But I think by the end of 2022, there will be no more title. Uh, number four. I think we're going to see less comedy on Impact. Less bad comedy, I should say. I don't mind comedy because I like comedy. I like to laugh. But the comedy is rarely very good in wrestling. I'm not just saying with impact. In wrestling in general, there's very few legitimately funny people. But everyone tries to be funny, and it doesn't work. I think we're going to see less bad comedy this year. I think there's going to be more of a focus on a serious product. Now, there was a time where TNA was very, very serious, and I felt, okay, we could, you know, someone needs to smile a little bit here. So you want to have some kind of balance. You want to have a little bit of lightheartedness. But there's there was episodes in 2021 where it was almost like comedy throughout the whole thing. And there was episodes in 2020, I talked about this on The Cool Factor, where Johnny Swinger had multiple segments on an episode. He was with Madison Rain one moment, and then he was with Willie Mack the next, and then he had a match. And he is one of the people I think is legitimately funny. It took me a while to warm up to him. At first, I was like, get him off my screen. But after a while, I saw the humor in it. But we see that there's no Falaba on the website, which Falaba, he was used... I, I actually like Falaba, but he was used um, tastefully. Like It wasn't like he was on the show every week doing some kind of comedy segment. But, but there was 
you know, they beat Swingers Palace into the ground, which some of you guys liked it. I didn't. I liked Wrestle House. Um, I didn't like the who shot Johnny Bravo thing. I, If you guys remember, I said you cannot rehabilitate uh, Larry D and Triple XL after this. You know, the other, so there were some other people they were able to be rehabilitated, but I was like, you, yo, Larry D's done, and look at him now. You know? AC Romero bounced. So, um, I think it could be, when, when done well, it can be funny, but when it's not done well, it can really hurt people. And I think with uh, the Ring of Honor, you know, um, lack of better term, invasion, with that going on, I don't think there's room for her nan daddy and, and, and all this on the show. You know, the wad of cat the wad of cash to me was the single worst storyline they've had in um I know that it led up to Swinger's Palace, but for the most part that was to me the worst storyline they've had in years. I just wanted it to go away so badly and it wouldn't. Um if you remember Hernandez self eliminated himself from the call your shot gauntlet because he wanted to even though he won the coveted number twenty spot because he wanted to go chase the, the wad of fives, you know? So I just don't think there's there's room for it right now. With you got Bullet Club here, you've got these Ring of Honor guys, you got Jonathan Gresham doing some matches, you know, we might see some new, more New Japan talent. I just don't think there's room for it on the show. Now there's some wrestlers, again, that could be kind of lighthearted so where the show is not super serious. But I don't see us going back to that. I think it's going to be a more more focused uh, product on, on really, really good wrestling. And I think you still want to have good stories and entertaining, engaging stories. But they don't have to be... There, there was a lot of unnecessary backstage stuff the last couple of years. Uh, unnecessary backstage storylines, you know? I don't think there's room for that anymore, and I don't think they're going to do it because it doesn't fit in the show and what they got going on purpose, uh, uh, you know, currently. When you have these Ring of Honor dudes, like, invading and they're taking dudes out, like, there's just, where do you fit in Hernandaddy and Swinger's Palace and the Swingerellas and uh, the Wad of Cash and someone being broke and sleeping in the arena, and there's no room for it. So I, I don't think we're going to get much of that in 2022. Um, what else I got? I, number three, I think Mickey James is going to hold the knockouts title for the majority of the year. She's the most marketable person in the, in the knockouts roster. There's just no denying that. And once Mickey drops the title, I don't know if she has much of a reason to stick around unless she just wants to wrestle. You know, she, she wrestles in NWA also, so she's not contracted. But I don't think there's a need for her to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out just to have matches with Impact. That's just my personal opinion. I think they're going to keep the title on her for, uh, you know, up till Bound for Glory. I know Tasha Steeles is the number one contender. And we want to say, as fans, we want to be like, okay, Tasha needs to win the title. Uh, Mickey needs to put her over, build stars, this and this. It's not really the way Impact operates. And they traditionally haven't operated like that. So I think uh, Tasha Steeles is going to be in a good spot here. And there, she's going to be elevated. And she's going to be one of the cornerstones and, and futures of the, the division. But I don't think she's going to beat Mickey James. I just don't think that's what they're going to ultimately do. I think she's just going to continue to be the title uh, the champion. I mean, she's going to have it for a, a solid year. You know, they usually like to have their knockouts champions have fairly long reigns. And I think that's that's what they're gonna do. Uh, they're giving us on free TV her versus Chelsea Green here soon, so we know that that's not gonna be a feud coming up. So I don't know what feuds there are gonna be for her. But uh, Diana doesn't need the belt because now she has the Ring of Honor Championship, and as long as she has the Reina de Reinas, she's gonna have a belt, and she's gonna look serious, and she's gonna look credible, she's gonna look like a big deal, she's gonna look like a star. Unless it's Jordan Grace who wins it at some point, which that's who I would put my money on for the knockouts and say, yo, we got to keep her around forever. I don't think Mickey is going to drop it. I think we expected her to drop it to Deanna Hardikill, or we expected her to drop it fairly quickly after winning it. 
I just don't think she's going. I think they want her to carry the title to whoever. Now that WWE's going to apparently let her carry it on their program, they're going to be like, where else can she carry this title? She can carry it onto um, NWA programming. Maybe when Ring of Honor has their shows again, maybe she carries it there too. Maybe she, who knows where she takes it to, but uh, because she's the marketable talent that every company would book, I think personally um, that's what they're going to do. So we'll see. It's also possible that they say, okay, the Knockouts champion could be uh, somewhere, uh, someone like Tasha Steele's a little lower in the card because we have Deanna as the high-profile Ring of Honor women's champion. Like, that could happen, but I think it's going to be Mickey James for majority of the year. Um, number two, I think Scott Demore is going to turn into a heel authority figure. And I've said this for a while now. Many people agree. I think most people agree that he's on TV entirely too much. He clearly wants to be a part of the program, which is fine. He runs the place. If that's what he wants to do, cool. I don't think people dig it. And I remember, you know, the Monday Night Raw authority figures that they used to do, and they would be a big part of the show in the, in the, in the first opening segment. But you wouldn't see them throughout the, sh the two hours, or the three hours, I should say. You didn't, you didn't see that character just keep popping up. And it's... You know, someone cuts a backstage interview, Scott walks in. He's in his office, he's walking around, He's and there's always wrestlers around, he's always involved. People have an argument, he walks in. Someone's cutting a promo and they're mad in the ring, he walks in. Like, it's, maybe it's realistic, maybe that's more realistic, because if you have your, if you're in charge, you are around all these things, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's pro probably more realistic, but I think he's on screen a little too much, and he is... Almost keeping Josh Alexander away from the world title picture. You know, it seems like he's doing it for the good of Josh. But once you once you actually get Josh back into that angle with Moose, the Moose title reign that we're enjoying is probably going to be over. And they're in a really weird place with that because you want to have Moose to have a strong title run, but you can't keep Josh away the title for, away from the title forever. So the only way you can get away with it is... If Scott Demore is purposely putting roadblocks in front of him um, for at least the next several months, I think Josh will have the title by Bound for Glory. I think I think it's going to happen at Slammiversary. I don't think it's going to happen at Rebellion. I think they're going to try to keep Moose as a champion for as you know as long as they can. But I think Moose. I, I think by the time Slammiversary rolls around, you can't delay it any further. You know what I mean? But I do think he's going a heel authority figure role. He is a heel. He's a heel on this on TV whether he's trying to be or not. Whether it's because people don't like him popping up all the time or because he's keeping Josh Alexander from wrestling for the belt. But he he is a heel. Maybe it's not on purpose, but he's a heel. Uh, that was number two, right? So number one, I think the Bound for Glory main event... I think Josh Alexander, again, will have the title by Bound for Glory. I think he's going to win at Slammiversary. I think his opponent at Bound for Glory is going to be Trey Miguel. That kind of gets away from the marquee matchups they like to go for Bound for Glory. Like, they would rather give you... They would rather give you Charlie Haas wrestling for the Impact title than Trey Miguel, in my opinion, at Bound for Glory. That's not going to happen, obviously. But I think some people inside would rather some kind of name wrestle for the title. Not so much like the the young talent within the company. But this is one thing that I noticed during Josh Alexander's X Division title title run. You know, he had the TJP matches and he was wrestling this dude and this dude and they were, you know, they were making the title a big deal. He was putting on five star matches. But to my knowledge, someone correct me if I'm wrong, he didn't wrestle Trey Miguel. Or even if he did, it was just a, a one-off throwaway match. And then they moved on to something else. But he didn't have a program with Trey Miguel. And Trey is the dude that I think has the most star potential in the company right now. That's that's being, I want to say, under, underutilized. They're, they're not util, being utilized in the main event, but I think they can they can get there, given the opportunity. I think he's that dude. I hated the Rascals. I hated the gimmick. I hated the comedy. A lot of people liked it. I didn't. 
But he came back to the company completely transformed. He's putting on, in my opinion, just as good as matches as Josh Alexander is. And in relation, they're, they're different sizes and they're different style matches. But relative to Josh's matches, I think Trey has is, is been on that level. Him versus Steve Macklin was my favorite match. Um, and Steve Macklin's the, uh, the other one on the heel side that I, I would really, really look look out for in 2022 that could end up being that dude. But I do think Trey Miguel is, the, is they're going to go a babyface versus babyface match. One that they just didn't give us. They didn't give us like, you know, we got the Iron Man match versus TJP, but we didn't get that like real banger versus Trey Miguel that we're still talking about. But if it happened, I forgot about it. And I think most people forgot about it. So someone will let me know if that actually happened, but we didn't get that classic match between these two guys, and I think that's the direction uh, they want to ultimately go. If you're talking about building two legit main event babyface stars within the company, I think you you got to do it. And Trey is going to get to that point once this X Division title runs over. I don't think he can go back. He kind of like Rich Swan. Like Rich Swan can't go back to the X Division at this point. You know. He, he's been elevated further. Yeah, they brought him down a little bit. But I don't think Rich can ever go back to the X Division. And I feel that way with Trey Miguel as well. I think he's going to, uh, once he drops it, maybe he'll get one more run. Maybe he'll win it back. But I think he's going to be in the main event picture sooner than later. And they purposely didn't give us you know, the banger between the two for that reason. So that's what I got for you guys. I'm your boy BQ. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I am out. Peace. All Impact Lounge content is brought to you by Built Bar, the number one tasting protein bar in America. It tastes just like a candy bar. Don't believe me. See for yourself. I'm a consumer. Trust me. Go to Built.com. Use promo code BQ10 for 10% off.